All right. So um, first of all, I want to thank you for coming uh, at one o'clock in the morning. That's very generous of your time. And we really, really do appreciate it. Um, Dr. Kilari runs uh, labs. He's in Boston Children's Hospital, Dan and Far Harvard Cancer Institute. He's a professor in pathology at Harvard Medical School. And I'm gonna open it up with some polling questions as we do. And uh, so the first question is, what type of treatment are you on? You guys see that? Because for some reason it changed on me. Uh, I see it, Mark. Got it, all right. So this gives Dr. Kilari a little bit of who we are in the audience. Okay, I'm gonna end it and share it. So electinib is 57%, lorlatinib is 21%, 8% are um, pergatinib, and we have 2% that's um, insertive. So I'm start sharing that one and jump to the next question. Um, length of diagnosis. How long since your diagnosis? And I'm going to end this poll. All right, so we got uh, one and under 28%, three and four years, 28%, one and two years is 22%, five and six years is 14%, and seven, eight years is 3%. And I'm going to stop sharing that. Nine years uh, or longer, I'd say it's 3%. So. And my last question here will be, How many TKS have you taken? There's multiple choice. So if you also took chemotherapy, you can write that down to click that one too. Okay, I'm in this ball. Share the results. So 66% of us has had one TKI, 90% has had two. 17% um, of us have had chemotherapy, 10% uh, of us has had three TKIs, and 4% has had four TKIs. So I'm going to right now turn it over to Dr. Ken Culver, who's also uh, works for Out Positive, and he is our Director of Clinical Affairs and Clinical Trials. Is that the right title, it's, Ken? It's close enough, Mark. All right, good. And so good evening, good uh, good night, whatever it might be to the Alk Positive community. It's my pleasure to be on with you again tonight. You know, in, in the Alk Positive Medical Committees, which I'm a part of, we're determined to work as quickly as possible for new transformative therapies for patients with Alk, uh, lung cancer, and more broadly, as we learn. And so part of that has been uh, providing grants to leading researchers who are working specifically on new novel therapies for ALK that we believe could be transformative in the overall treatment. Dr. Chiarli is one of those we've who's we funded for two key immunotherapy projects. Broadly, you can call them in that category. They're distinct, but hopefully will be synergistic. So it's my great pleasure to introduce Roberto Chiarli, a professor at Boston Children's Har uh, Hospital and Harvard University, who's going to uh, explain what he's doing and how it's going to make a difference, assuming it all works. So welcome, Roberto. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Ken, for the nice introduction. Thank you, Mark, also, and Summer for the, the invitation. So I was reading the chat. I'm not the only one at 1 a.m. o'clock. There is Corinne from France that is also. Bonjour, uh, bonsoir, bonsoir. Okay, <laughs> hi Corinne. So, <laughs> so I, I'm not alone. That, that's uh, yes. oh, Norway yeah. too. Okay, yes. wow. So we are many in, in the middle of the night trying to to get uh, the best out of this session. Yeah. That again is a is a great pleasure to to be here. Of course, uh, I need to be so grateful to the all positive uh, longevity group because they are fantastic. They are organizing these events. They are funding great research and they are so 
supportive and of course so nice person i mean ken mark and and all the the other of the team are 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 wonderful uh, colleague i i would call them because we are working together in the same direction to try to 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 find a cure for uh, for all positive lung cancer or in general for alk diseases so uh, to to try to explain as as ken said that uh, uh, um, Al Positive uh, was was so nice to fund basically two uh, different grants, two different lines of research directed toward the, the same uh, the same unique goal. Uh, I'm I'm uh, I've prepared a few slides that I I'm going to share and try to make them as simple as possible. Uh, of course, uh, immunotherapy and the immune system are by definition complicated. Uh, and and the, probably you you are have been all exposed to the complication of the immune system uh, for the COVID pandemia, right? So uh, it's not simple. It's not simple to understand how the immune system works and how we can exploit the immune system, uh, not only uh, as vaccine against virus, but even more difficult to understand how to exploit the immune system to to treat a cancer. Uh, but I'm trying to do so, and uh, and my goal is to develop immunotherapies in general uh, to treat all positive lung cancer mainly, but also other type of all positive tumor. You know that uh, despite here, the community is largely for all positive lung cancer, which is basically this group here, okay? There are many other diseases driven by, by ALK, okay? Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> I've been used to, to make this slide very simple. Of course, I'm a pathologist, so I know this entity, but I understand that many of these tumor, even this initial, are not easy for you to, to follow. For example, this is the name of a lymphoma, which is a tumor of lymphocytes that is driven by ALK. This is lung cancer, of course. This is another type of lymphoma. This is a sarcoma, so a tumor of stromal tissue. And then you can see some breast cancer, colon cancer, renal cancer, thyroid cancer can be driven also by ALK and also other tumor like neuroblastoma and eventually glioblastoma, radomyosarcoma. So there is a, there is a long list of, of tumors that are driven by ALK and uh, our focus is largely on lung cancer. But just to tell you that in principle, if we are able to develop this immunotherapy, we could benefit a larger number of patients beyond only lung cancer, but also a targeting possible the same disease in, in other, other tumors. And uh, the key point is that um, the reason why we started to work on, on uh, the developing immunotherapies for ALK uh, is that ALK is this protein in, in brown. So as a pathologist, we can detect ALK uh, with a technique that is called immunostochemistry. And this technique tells where the cells express ALK, so where the tumors are. So here, for example, is an ALK positive lung cancer. Here is an ALK negative lung cancer. And of course, you see that here, the brown cells are the ALK positive tumor cells. In contrast, of course, this tumor is, is negative. Um, why I'm showing this image? Because this image tells uh, a very important concept that uh, in contrast to the normal tissue that is surrounding the tumor. So this, this that is not stain is normal tissue surrounding the tumor. Uh, the tumor cells strongly express the protein. And, and the lymphocytes that, that infiltrate the tumor may have the capability to recognize this AL protein and target the tumor for destruction. So that is the, the key concept that we want to, to exploit. Um, why we want to do that? Because has the as you just responded to the, uh, the, the question from, from Mark, uh, basically majority of you are uh, under treatment with an ALK TKI, so a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, which is a drug that inhibits the tyrosine kinase activity of, of ALK, right? So ALK drives the tumor in the cells by activating a program, at, um, <clears throat> basically a, a growth program of the cells via a kinase activity. And this drug blocked that activity, and that's why they work so wonderfully well, right? Uh, however, uh, ALK TKI, despite are great, they are often not the, the final solution. So we think that uh, there is need to some to add something more, and that's why we 
turn our attention to the immune system because we think that the immune system has the capability to find these brown cells and eliminate them completely. Especially when, uh, when the response to ALT-TKR are very good and the tumor is completely under control, uh, that is the time when the immune system could do the job uh, uh, the best. Um, and uh, I need to, to, to bring to, to this concept that basically uh, ALK tumors are, the, that long list of ALK tumor can be grouped in two different categories. Uh, one category, which is ALK positive lung cancer, which most of the, the person in the group here are, are interested with, um, in this case, ALK is internal to the cell. So ALK is uh, activated via a, a chromosomal rearrangement. Uh, many of you know that your chromosomal rearrangement, for example, ML4 ALK is the, the most frequent one, but there are a long series. Uh, in this case, uh, sorry, the, the fusion protein is inside the cell. So how can the immune system see something that is internal to the tumor cells? I will explain you why. Okay, uh, in lymphoma is the same story. In lymphoma, ALK positive lymphoma, ALK is internal inside the cell. Okay, it's not on the surface of the cells. Okay, so the immune system to recognize the presence of ALK in the tumor cells needs some trick, and I will tell you. Uh, in contrast, other ALK positive tumor, ALK is a, is a transmembrane receptor, so it's a is a long receptor that goes from the uh, um, outside portion of the cells to the internal. So this is basically a, a, a graph that represents the cell membrane, okay? This portion is internal, inside the cell. This is external, outside the cell. And this is what normal ALK is positioned. So it's uh, some, there is a portion outside, a portion internal. And so in this case, the immune system can recognize directly something of ALK that is expressed outside. So my group has been interested to develop not only a cancer vaccine, but also other type of, of, um, of targeted therapy and targeted immunotherapy in this case that can help completely eradicate and, and cure tumor with ALK. Um, so in the case that ALK is internal, uh, we need probably two ways. One is the cancer vaccine that we have been developing and was supported by, by the first of, of, of the, the two grants from, from the uh, ALK positive group. Uh, and I will tell you a little bit of this, but it's not really the topic of today. Uh, but this cancer vaccine can help recognizing ALK that is internal. Uh, the second approach that we are developing, this is the second grant because these are two uh, although related to independent lines of investigation, the second is to develop ALK TCR T cells, and I will tell you what, what these are. I'm not going to talk tonight about this other approach that we are also developing, like ALK CAR T cells, because these CAR T cells, they need ALK to be expressed external, as I said, and so they do not apply to lung cancer, but they apply to other type of ALK positive tumor like neuroblastoma, okay? Uh, I'm telling this because a lot of people is asking why do you don't develop ALK T cells for lung cancer. Well, it's not possible. It's not possible because ALK is inside the cell. CAR T cells work only when the protein is outside on the external surface of the cell. Okay, so basically this is to tell that uh, we have two strategy to target lung cancer and any other type of ALK tumor with ALK internal. One is the cancer vaccine, the other is the TCR T cells. Let me explain a little bit how this, uh, these two methodology work. Okay, so um, for, um, for the vaccine, which is the, the first grant that we were basically uh, supported and we are trying to now implement a phase one clinical, clinical trial for this, um, ALK is here, uh, ALK is a protein, so basically is chopped is cut in small pieces that are called peptides by a system that is called immunoproteasome. It's like, a, like some sort of, a, of bottleneck in which the protein is squeezed through and fragmented in, in small pieces that are called peptides, right? Uh, peptides are short, are typically eight to nine amino acid. Amino acid is the one single unit that uh, compose a protein, right? So the protein in our body are composed by amino acid, right? 
And so peptide are short stretch of amino acid, typically eight to nine, and are these basically color dots, okay? So now ALK is destroyed by this proteasome, and this happened constantly in the tumor cells, also in normal cells. So constantly the tumor cells produces new ALK, new ALK is, is, is degraded, and then, uh, and then the cycles continue forever for the entire life of, of the tumor cells, right? So when ALK is fragmented into this peptide, these peptides are brought now on the surface of the cell, so now the, the trick is kind of explained. So on the surface of the cell, this small peptide of ALK are presented in a so-called complex that is called class one complex, okay? I know that is co complicated, but uh, I, I hope it's, it's easy enough to understand because it's something that we are dealing every day with this concept, basically with immunology, also in, in real life, actually. And so now we have this complex in which this dot is a fragment of the ALK protein, a peptide of the ALK protein in, in this so-called MHC class one complex. Okay, let's say class one complex. So this complex is what is recognized by a T cell. So T cell are part of our immune system. They're also called T lymphocytes, T cell or T lymphocytes is the same definition. And T cell, how do they recognize the AL peptide in this complex. They use a, a receptor that is called T cell receptor, TCR, okay, for, for receptor of the T cell. So each single T cells in our body, we have many billions of, of T cells in our body, okay? So these T cells circulate constantly in our blood, into the tissue, and try to recognize peptides that are inappropriate in our system. So viral viruses, when, when they infect us, they produce viral peptide that are presented in the same complex and recognized by T lymphocytes that can kill the, the cells that have the virus inside. So that is the way why, or the way uh, by which T cells protects us from, from viral infection, right? In the case of tumor is the same concept. So a, a T cell uh, as a T cell receptor that, that binds to the AL peptide in this complex, and after this binding, there is proximity, and so the T cells can kill and, and destroy the tumor cell, okay? So how can we engage, and that's the trick for, for, for achieving a functional and effective uh, anti-ALK immunotherapy? Uh, how can we tell our T lymphocytes that they need to recognize the ALK that is inappropriately expressed by the tumor cells? Basically, there are two ways. One is the vaccine, okay? In the vaccine, we take exactly the same ALK peptide, basically these round dots, okay? But we produce a lot synthetically. So we ask a company to produce a lot of these peptides similar to the COVID vaccine, basically. Uh, and then we inject this peptide into a patient. This peptide is taken by, by cells that are called antigen processing cells. This is a component of the immune system. And these cells educate the T lymphocytes to develop a T cell receptor that then can recognize exactly the same peptide that was using the vaccine to kill the tumor cell. Okay, so this is the concept of the vaccine that we are implementing clinical trials. So we discover this peptide and was a long journey. It takes several years to discover because it's not easy. They are extremely small. You cannot see them. So there are sophisticated techniques to find them. So we discovered this ALK peptide. And now that we know the sequence of this ALK peptide, we have the key to instruct the immune system to work for us. And so in the clinical trial, we will synthesize this ALK peptide that we discover and then use them to vaccinate and educate the T cell. But today, the focus is mostly on, on TCR T cells. So TCR T cells, they are, they are similar, however different. Uh, why they are similar? Because um, uh, the, the TCR is the same. So the T cell receptor is the same. The difference is that uh, in the case of the vaccine, we are exploiting the natural T cell receptors that are present in our body. So as I said, there are billions of T lymphocytes. When we vaccinate, we hope that some 
of this lymphocyte has a good natural T cell receptor that recognizes the alpeptide. So we are exploiting the natural TCR. Uh, in the case of, of the TCR T cells that are engineered, we not only know the alpeptide, which is again this, this blue dot, but we are also discovering the exact sequence of this ALK T cell receptor, okay? So out of the 1 billion cells, so which is a huge number, that's why it's a, it's a big effort, uh, we discover one cell, sometimes two or three, okay? Uh, that has the T cell receptor that perfectly recognizes the alpeptide in this complex. Once we discover this T cell receptor, now we can engineer artificially the T cell receptor, take the T lymphocytes from a patient, and put this artificial ALK specific T cell receptor at this point, and generate millions of cells, all, right, all of them identical and all of them recognizing ALK. So it will be like a, like a big army of T lymphocyte that will be injected into the patient and now go in the blood, go in the lungs, all combine millions of, of these T lymphocytes simultaneously killing the tumor cells. So uh, if we are able to discover good TCR, this could be a, an extremely powerful strategy to completely eradicate tumor cells. So as you see between the, these two approaches, there are similarity because we needed to leverage, leverage our previous discovery of the alpeptide, right? Without knowing the exact sequence of this alpeptide that are processed by the immune system, we could not discover the alpCR. okay? But the difference is that via vaccine, we are basically exploiting the natural immunity and hoping to find a good cell with a good TCR that will expand and kill the tumor. In the engineered cells, we are doing everything engineering off the shelf, right? So it's a long process of discovery, but once we will complete that, uh, we will have a tool that will be kind of universal and can be used basically for any T lymphocyte of, of any patient, okay? There is still one limitation. Uh, that is uh, that this complex that are called class one, MHC one, okay? They are different between different patients, okay? They are partially shared, but partially different, okay? So this is a, a little bit of a limitation because this alpeptide needs to form this complex and this, this complex are different from group of patients, right? So there are some of these complex that are present in 30% of the human population, other in 20%, other in 10%, 5%, and so on. That's the only limitation of this technique, but it's a general limitation of, of the immune system. I think there are, there are questions in the chat that uh, may be... Okay, great. I think uh, so far it's just uh, uh, good comments. Excellent and, and exciting. Great. So if, if there are questions, please write them in, in the chat, and I will try to, uh, to answer as they come. Okay, so I hope that now is, is sufficiently clear uh, why, um, why we are working in this direction, why we are confident that this will be a powerful way to exploit the, and uh, harness the human uh, spontaneous uh, uh, immune system, right, to, to target tumor cells. And of course, we know that immunotherapy does work, right? I mean, that, that's a lot now of indication that immunotherapy does work in general in many cancer. Unfortunately, it does not really work in lung cancer. And actually, almost probably oh, very, very few of you have been uh, tried to be treated with uh, immune checkpoint blocker like anti-PD-1, anti-CTLA-4, anti-PD-L1, because unfortunately those type of immunotherapy that are broad, they are not really specific. They don't go after specifically ALK. They're just try to generally stimulate the immune system. Unfortunately, they don't really work well for ALK positive tumor. They work better for other, but not for ALK positive tumor. So I think maybe few of, of you uh, try to be treated with um, with immune checkpoint blockade or immunotherapy, uh, but typically is is not not great, and there are also some toxicity. Okay, so let me see if there are more questions. Okay, now now there are question. 
Um, so Israel, oh no, sorry, there is one. Okay. How do you overcome the difference um, in group of patients? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, by, by multiple discoveries. Uh, so the point is that uh, we discover this alpeptide um, in a group of population that is basically 50% of, of all human beings. So it's good, it's half of them, but there are still half of them that are not covered. So uh, the solution is just to discover more of this alpeptide to reach a point in, in, in which basically all the patient will be covered and in all patient will be discovered at least one alpeptide that could be used for, for the same technology. How do you address the limitation uh, or is there is a screening to the limitation? Yeah, this is more or less the, the, the same, uh, the same uh, uh, question as before. So the limitation is just to discover more and it's perfectly doable. Uh, our, we are, of course, are focusing, we already discovered enough to treat uh, half of the patients. So now we are trying to move forward into a clinical trial for the vaccine to, to really show that it is the, the right way to go. If successful, then, then we or, or a company could extend this search to, to, to the missing patient, right? Roberto, do you want to finish your slides and then we'll Hit the ah, questions. And, and then go to the question later. Yeah, okay. sure. That'd be a lot better, probably. I can do that. Okay. So, so okay, great. So let's move forward. Um, and probably in, in my slides, there will be some answer that I was reading. Um, so the, the ALP vaccine uh, phase one trial basically was possible because we checked a lot of boxes, right? So we demonstrate uh, that tumor cells express this complex class one that I was mentioned before. We identified the ALK immunogenic peptide, those that are fragmented by the immunoproteasome. We demonstrate that they are really immunogenic, so they can really elicit TCRs, so T cell responses. And then of course, we demonstrate that they are anti-tumor. This is one example of, of this complex. So how can we detect this complex in patients? Uh, thank God there are very good antibodies. So here is a, again a technique that the same as above that is called immunostochemistry. So this is how three different all positive tumor look alike during a lung biopsy or, or an excision biopsy that are resected. This is the ALK expression in the tumor cells. Some, some tumor are very strong, other a little bit weaker, but all of them express ALK. And this is the complex, this complex class one that I was mentioning. You see that is constantly expressed by all the tumor cells. So that's good. So it means that the tumor cells have this complex and they could present alpeptide. And I, I'm skipping this one because this is another way to demonstrate the same concept. Then the demonstration that uh, ALK is indeed immunogenic. We have already some evidence in patients. So this is a series of almost 100 um, patients uh, that we collected at Dana Farber together with Dr. Awad, which, which of course was part of the first grant and is helping to develop the phase one clinical trial. He will be uh, the, the oncologist leading the trial when the, the trial will start. And so he collected a uh, hundred patients at Dana Farber, but now of course many more than that. And we were able to show that already some of these patients have this sort of responses. So some of these patients have already lymphocytes and antibody that recognize ALK spontaneously, right? So the vaccine or DTCR will just boost this immunity. This is to explain the discovery part and just showing the complexity. I don't want to, to go into details, but it's a, it took us three to four years to discover this ALK peptide. And we discover in these two, this is the, the way we call the class one, this is the nomenclature of the, this complex class one. And these are the two most frequent. So we discover in this, that is 40% of the human population. And in this, that is 18% of the human population. So if we combine the two together, it's, um, it's a little bit above 50% of the population. But we are planning to extend the discovery to all of these to cover the majority of, of the population. And this is an example of how how normal patients react to, to the peptide. This is a, a, a technology called Ellispot, but just to show the way that we can detect this, these responses. So I'm, I want to go directly to 
to the TCR. So how do we discover the, the TCR? So the TCR is a, is a little bit of a long journey. I, I will try to make this very simple, although it's, it's complicated, but I think I, I need to give you something, right? Um, so for example, this is the, the sequence of one of those al peptide that I was just mentioned. All these letter are one single amino acid, okay? And this is, uh, is basically nine amino acids, so it's called peptide. Okay, so um, to discover TCR, so this, this receptor that recognizes specifically this peptide, we have basically two modalities. One is to go in mice. So we use this peptide, we vaccinate mice, we naturally stimulate the expansion of lymphocytes that have specific TCR, and then we discover them. Is a little bit complicated. These are all these fancy instrument and cloning and sequencing the DNA is a complicated process. But at the end of the day, for example, in this case, we were able to, to discover five different TCR, five different receptor that specifically recognize this AL peptide. Okay. And, uh, and you see here, for example, this is a negative cells, this is a positive cells, even though this is a staining that you're not familiar with. You can clearly understand that this TCR is positive in these cells because we discover and these are negative cells, okay? Uh, and then we, we the, the next step is to uh, understand which one of these five, in this case, we discover five, but we could, we could do even more, which one is the good one? Maybe all five, can be good or maybe one number one or number two could be better than the other in in uh, uh, eliciting an anti-tumor activity right so that's what we we want to to discover and so there are all these steps a lot of of these uh, graphical parts that uh, uh, i'm not going to 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 enter too much into details but just to show you this in this last panel the bars one way to understand that the tcr is a is a good tcr uh, is to, to see that uh, when you put the lymphocyte, the T lymphocyte with that particular TCR in close proximity with a tumor cell that has ALK. So for example, in red, these are tumor cells that have the ML4 ALK fusion, exactly like, uh, like, uh, like lung cancer, of course. And these are cells that do not have the ALK fusion in blue, okay? So uh, the point is that if the TCR is good, when you put the T cells in contact with a tumor cells that has ALK, the T cells start to activate, to proliferate and, and to kill the tumor, right? And you can measure that. Of course, we have sophisticated instrument that we can measure this activity, right? And here, very simple. If the, the tumor cell does not have ALK, the T cell is quiet all this blue, you see they're very low in this measurement, okay? In contrast, when we put the same T cells in the presence of a tumor cell that does express ALK, the ml 4 alk fusion, you see that boom, the T cells immediately jumps and start to grow and kill and be activated. Exactly like our immune system reacts to a viral infection, in this case, they, they are reacting against the tumor cells. And of course, they are killing them. Okay, so this basically is, is a little bit complicated slides, but summarize the, the entire process. So we, we vaccinate mice, or so sometimes we also use human cells from patients. We go through all the processing of discovery and sequencing. We find a good one, and then one by one, we test them until we, we optimize the, the, um, the sequence, the mechanism, and we find the, the good one. So the, the second grant that was funded by the Al Positive Group, I mean, was a, a fantastic news to know that and also to, to, to see how, how um, positive were the reaction to, to, to this approach that we proposed. The second grant is exactly to undertake this discovery process. Of course, we are already started and, and we are in a, in, in a good position. So undertake the discovery process and move this step forward until we identify one or maybe two or maybe three, as much as we can, the more the better, of course, 
a TCR that can kill all positive tumor cells. Okay, this is basically was the slide, last slide of my presentation. And of course, uh, I need to, to thank uh, the Al Positive Group, the uh, Longevity Foundation, other source of funding. Of course, now we have uh, uh, an NIH and CI grant also to support uh, the clinical trial for the ALK vaccine. The V Foundation supported that, uh, the Bridge Project, which is a MIT Dana Farber grant. And of course, my group in, in Boston, uh, collaborator at Dana Farber, Mark Award, Dr. Award, of course, is a, is a key player, is my, my uh, major teammate in, 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 in this effort. But there are also other uh, important investigators involved from the Dana Farber, the MIT and Koch Institute, still, uh, still in Boston. Uh, other collaborators in other institutions, and of course, a company that is uh, uh, helping us to develop the, the phase one clinical trial for, for the vaccine. Okay, I think um, I can stop here for the, um, with the presentation. Okay. And uh, great. Um, so before we start flipping through all the chat questions, I don't know, Ken, do you want to kind of give us a broad range of your um, you know, opinion of this research. It'd be, my, it'd be my pleasure to say a couple of things. First of all, congratulations, Dr. Chiarli, and to you and your team. This is exactly the kind of thing we want to see happening for um, ALK positive cancer patients. And I just like to make sure everybody realizes that, you know, this is pioneering research. There is not yet an FDA approved T-cell therapy for solid tumors, right? TILs aren't approved. Other TCRs aren't approved. CAR-Ts have had very limited success in solid tumors. So this is pioneering work. And before I joined ALK Positive about five months ago, I worked at GlaxoSmithKline for four years on their TCR project. And so the fact that this is moving forward, and even if, if in the beginning, of this revolution in immunotherapy, only 50% of the class one matches, it's gonna get better because there are new techniques that are, that are coming on now that are gonna be able to do infinity enhancement that will decrease the need to specifically have a specific HLA type. So see this as a, the first step in what's gonna be a transformative era of immunotherapy for solid tumors in this case, I'm specifically thinking of it um, for out positive tumors. And the other thing, what I really like about it is the, the dual approach is that they theoretically, and Roberto, I'm sure we'll talk about this, they could go together. We could give people the vaccine to build up a repertoire and then those we could take out and engineer the specific receptor and perhaps one would amplify the other. So in a way, I kind of think of it as the TCR is an ambush. You're going to infuse, at GSK, we're infusing 10 billion cells that were genetically modified to hit a tumor antigen. 10 billion. So it's an ambush to the tumor. The vaccine is more like you're building up an army over time that will attack the tumor. And frankly, I, I really, and Roberto, I'm passing it to you, but I just think that there's a high likelihood of there being synergy with these two. So thanks again for your great presentation. Yeah, thank you, Ken. Yeah, I, I, you're, you're perfectly right. Um, the two uh, approaches are complementary. They are not exclusive. So in, in principle, they could be uh, used either simultaneously or one after the other. And, um, and actually, because they uh, use the same sequence of the AL peptide, uh, there is a good chance, and we are testing that in uh, in our preclinical mouse model, of course, there is a good chance that we could vaccinate the TCR T cells. So uh, it means that uh, when we discover the sequence of this TCR, that is this receptor specific, of course, as Ken said, we can engineer ex vivo, so in uh, in, in instrument before reinfusing them in patient, uh, hundreds of, of millions of this TCR and then reinfusing patient to, to ambush the tumor. I, I like the word that, that Ken was, was using, right? Uh, but on top of that, when these cells are back in, in the body of, of the patient and they basically 
are have done their job um, to keep them long living for long term. So to really prevent the tumor to come back or to do bad things like metastasis or come back a few years later, we could vaccinate them. So to keep them kind of healthy and ready <laughs> and uh, even after, after many months or many years to be ready to target tumor cells in case they reappear again, right? So the, the two strategy could be really combined because they they leverage exactly the same sequence of, of bulk and the same complexes. So uh, although they are different strategy, they they cross each other in in a nice point. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why we are we are so excited about the the possibility of having both uh, approaches. Okay, uh, can, so you ex can, can you explain real quickly the difference between the TIL and TCR therapies? Yes, so the 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 TILS, um, TILS stands for a, a tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, and lymphocytes are these T lymphocytes that I I was showing right. Um, so what is the TIL therapy about? So the TIL therapy. Um, uh, um, leverages the fact that uh, inside the tumor, in the mass of the tumor, uh, there are these spontaneous T cells that uh, that naturally tend to react uh, against the tumor, right? Uh, and so the T therapy um, basically uh, try to exploit these natural, naturally developed T lymphocytes by taking them through a biopsy. So you take the tumor. You take a biopsy of the tumor, then you isolate these T lymphocytes from the tumor. You try to grow to grow them ex vivo, so in a in an incubator outside the patient. And then when you reach a certain number, that typically again is uh, is at least fifty to one hundred million, then you reinfuse them into patients. The idea is that uh, if these T lymphocytes are found internal inside a tumor, it must be because they are doing something against the tumor, okay? So if you can uh, expand them from few million to a hundred of million, you can basically augment or increase the anti-tumor activity. The okay. problem with TILs uh, is that uh, you do not know what they are reacting against. So you're just growing them hoping that they are recognizing something wrong in the tumor. In the case of an AL positive tumor, it could be ALK itself, but could be also something different from ALK. It could be another protein, another molecule. It could be something that we don't know, right? Um, so the problem of TIL is that we do not know what they are reactive against. Uh, the second problem with TIL is that every single patient has different TILs. And so TILs from patient A cannot be used in patient B. So TILs from patient A can be expanded and refused only in that particular patient. For the next patient, you, do, you need to redo the entire process again. And for the third patient, again and again and again. So each patient has to grow its own TILs, okay? In contrast, if we are successful in finding RTCR, not only we will know exactly the antigen, which is of course is ALK because it's the driver of the tumor, so it's, it's a significant one, uh, but we could generate this engineered TCR T cells extensively, almost indefinitely, and those could be used off the shelf or also for, for basically any patient. So it, it will be the same production repeated again and again and again, from the T lymphocytes of a patient, generate the TCR and infuse, and that will be become basically a, a, some sort of engineer process, similar to the CAR T cell process that now is a, is really I wouldn't say an industrial process, but is 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 um, is very clear in in the step and, and working effectively. So that's the main difference between TILs and engineer TCR. That gotcha. Uh, can can you run through the chat questions and see? Which yeah. ones you feel that should be? Uh, sure, sure. There's so there many are, of them. There are you know. many. So might be uh, here until three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we, we we don't want to go so late. Nah. Uh, I think um, uh, starting with Israel, that uh, is a very good question. 
dual positive tumor ever down modulate class one MHC1 expression? Would this be a barrier? Yes, that's a, a, a very important question. Um, we don't know, we don't know yet. As I show all these tumors, they do express very strong class one expression. We do not know whether they are or not capable to downmodulate. If they do so, this could be a barrier to both the vaccine and the TCR. However, there are drugs that can restore class one expression. So there are drugs that improve the expression of class one. So if that is going to happen, we will have an answer for that. Um, okay, uh, if ALK associated with IMT, which is inflammatory myofibrillary tumor, is inside, is exactly like lung cancer, is a fusion, so is inside. If there are differences related to HLA types, in principle, all HLA are the same. Uh, it's just that different all peptide binds to different HLA. So it's the discovery process that is different, but then when it's completed, it's basically forever because the, the sequence of the HLA is fixed. Um, will all positive patient be able to take this therapy vaccine? Uh, of course, that's, that's the goal. Uh, uh, the good thing of, of all positive patient is that uh, they are typically in very good condition ALT-TKI, they are not that toxic or they are well tolerated. Uh, so many of the patients will be in good condition to, to receive a vaccine or, or receive TCR therapy. Um, and then there is uh, the ALT peptide. Yes, it's the same for, for all patients with those specific complex because it's a shared sequence. Do you combine immunotherapy with TKI? This is Corinne from, from, from France. So also, also late at night. Uh, yes, we can. And actually that's a very, very good question because uh, 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 both the vaccine and the TCR are basically immunotherapy. So there is a good chance that uh, the so-called immune checkpoint therapy like anti-PD-1, anti-PDL-1, CTLA-4 could further increase the vaccination and uh, the TCR. And as a matter of fact, the design of the clinical trial, one arm is to combine the vaccine with, with standard immunotherapy, anti-PD-1 in particular. Are both immunotherapy techniques, TCR, T-cells, and vaccine expected to be an uh, effect in transversal blood? Oh, that's a very good question. Yes, they do, they do. We, we have evidence in, in, uh, in mice that they can cross the blood bar uh, brain barrier. And actually in mice, they can completely cure metastasis in the brain. So that's a, that's a, a fantastic success because that's a property of T lymphocytes. They can do that. Okay, so that's a, that's a great advantage. Um, what advantage are there in genetic testing for my sibling, my young children? Um, well, this question, I'm not sure I understand whether the genetic testing is on the probability of getting an alt tumor or donating cell. Uh, donating cell, no, because typically this therapy are generated from the T lymphocyte of each individual patient, right? So that, that's not uh, the case. How long do you expect the research to take? Uh, well, the, the vaccine, we are actively working to start the trial. There will be still few hurdles to, to, to overcome, but uh, we, are, we are getting there in a way or the other. Uh, the TCR, we are at the discovery phase. Uh, we already have some good candidate. Probably still we take a few years to, to, to validate and have the, the good ones. Is one of these more promising than the other? Uh, that's a good question. They could work, I mean, probably we already comment with, with Ken, they, they are complementary. Um, I think it will be patient dependent. There will be probably some patient that will respond very well to the vaccine, similar to COVID. There are some patients that uh, respond extremely well and other patients that respond poorly to the vaccine. So uh, my thinking is that, uh, if the vaccine works effectively, it's cheaper and easier than, than, than TCR. So probably that's the first strategy. But for all the patients that do not respond well to the, the vaccine, then we could switch to the TCR T cells and then eventually combine as, as we said before. We already 
commented about teals. So I'm skipping this question. And then Sandra is asking, uh, even with ALK, does having higher PDL make immunotherapy more successful? Yeah, no, unfortunately, as I said, immunotherapy does not really work on, on ALK positive, right? With few exception, um, I mean, we, there are a lot of possible explanation for this. Uh, I don't think we have time to enter this discussion, but uh, PDL1, uh, PDL, and PD1 antibody don't really work in, in the ALK setting. I already commented about the clinical trial status. Um, uh, oh, yes, this is a very good question from, uh, from Julie Posner. The vaccine would be best used when there is no evidence of disease or when metastasis is present. Uh, that's great. So uh, in principle, all the immunotherapy approach, they work best when the disease is to the lowest or minimal level possible, right? So typically immunotherapy don't work when the tumor mass is big or or out of control, unfortunately, right? Um, so in principle, the ideal setting to, to use a vaccine or TCL T cells will be when there is basically no evidence by, by imaging of disease. However, we know that still few residual tumor cells could be present. And in that condition, the immunotherapy will be ideal to eradicate those residual cells and present and prevent the relapse of the disease, right? And uh, likewise for the metastasis, I, I already comment on that. Um, can you join trial and still take a T, uh, TKI? Of course, uh, all these immunotherapy, I, I didn't mention, they are planned to be used together with an alt tki because we need the alt tki to slow the tumor growth and to keep the tumor under control to allow the immune system to, to do its job, right? So absolutely. The, the design of the vaccine and the use of the TCR will be in Last combination question. with an RTKI. Okay. Yeah. What percentage of, uh, of patient develop response in earlier research with Dr. Award is about 20, 25% of spontaneous anti alk immune responses. Has anyone studied why some ALK patient responded spontaneously in the 100 patient? No, yeah, that's that's a good question. We don't know why some patients respond, other don't. Probably is, is immune related. So each of us has a slightly different immune system. And so the way we see in the case of, of an ALK tumor, the way we see the ALK protein could be different. So that could explain this difference in spontaneous responses. Okay, so should the vaccine be effective? Do you foresee the vaccine needing to be administered on an annual or more frequent basis for our patient? Uh, probably uh, similar to, to COVID, you will need uh, uh, after the, the cycle of priming and boosting, which is multiple, multiple vaccination uh, in, a, in a relatively small or short amount of time, like three to six months, then probably there will be need to to vaccination for maintenance, probably every six months or one year. We, we don't really have an answer for that yet. So we need the, the clinical data to, to, to have some planning. Are the vaccinated mice expressing human A0201 so that the TCR are perfect? Exactly. Uh, uh, Israel, very good question. I didn't mention, but you, you already got the point. Yes, the mice have the human A0201. That's the point. I, I, I didn't specify that, but that's a critical point, correct. If the cancer is mutated uh, to be driven by non-alk oncogene, ha, ha, that's, that's a good point. Uh, yes, yes. Um, so as you might know, unfortunately, uh, especially to second and third generation LTKI, like alectinib and lorlatinib. Small cell. The L6. resistant mechanisms are ALK independent. So basically there are bypass pathway that uh, compensate for the ALK blockade, right? Um, however, the important uh, point for uh, either the vaccine or the TCR is that the ALK protein, even if it's not functional or not working, the ALK protein must be present. And there is evidence that uh, in all these tumors that become resistant through this bypass mechanism, 
the L protein is still expressed. So supposedly we expect the vaccine TCR to, to still work, even if the tumor is driven at that point by a different oncogene. Thank you, Corinne, for the compliments. Ooh, how will the gut my microbiome affect this? Oh, this is a great question. Uh, there is now a lot of interest on how the, the gut microbiome could affect immunotherapy in general. So there are evidence that uh, the gut in, 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 uh, in our in, in, in intestine can change the response to anti-PD-1, anti-CKLA-4. There are no data yet for TCR, but it's possible that will be also some influence. So we, we don't know. To what stage of the development of the disease treatments, the vaccine appropriate or effective? I think I already answered this question. Yeah, this being available to humans, we already comment on the timing. Are you concerned about on target of tumor effects from the T cells? I have read there is some minimal expression dynamic protein in the uh, central nervous system. That's another great question from Matt. Um, yes, so the, the, the normal L protein is basically not expressed in any tissue except for a little bit in the, in the CNS. Um, actually, we have a manuscript under revision and one reviewer, so Matt, you are like a, 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 as accurate as one reviewer, ask exactly this question. Um, so we did specific experiment in which we express ALK in the CNS with human HLA. We vaccinate and there was no toxicity whatsoever. Um, the point is that um, the expression of native ALK protein in the CNS is extremely low, much lower than the tumor. Um, so this gap of expression could kind of protect or minimize the infiltration of T cells in, into the brain. So, but we will know only when we do the clinical trial. That's that's uh, what we hope. Okay, and uh, these are questions are similar to what I already answer. I already answer about non-alk drivers. Clinical trial we commented. Thank you very much for the Italian comment from Troy. <laughs> Grazie mille, dottore. I like that. Uh, so Don is said, I had lung surgery two years ago, two lobotomy. My oncologist said that all cancer cell will return. So I'm trying to educate myself. Uh, I do get into the trial. So I already answered this. We need to be patient. We are trying to do our best effort is the reason we already commented about spontaneous immune response. I mean, you could be here all day. Yeah. I, so, I want to be respectful of your time, Dr. Yeah. Right. I think I just zoom through these are, and pick out some good ones. And yeah. I want you to go to bed before four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Thank you. I think we are almost at the end. And uh, all right. Grateful. There is probably one more. Let me read this from Karen. My son is all positive, uh, stage three. Genetic testing. Oh, I think uh, do genetic testing to understand whether relatives in the family can can develop a tumor. So far, there is no evidence for that. So I don't think there is a genetic testing that can predict that. And uh, that's it. I think uh, I think I went to the end of the question. And, uh, and you are the, awesome. The, Thank you so much. Great. And. Uh, yeah. Have a safe trip back, back to Boston and everyone on mute and give their uh, thanks to uh, Dr. Clara to come in on a, it's actually a Monday morning for you. Yeah, thank you, everybody. It's such thank a Thank you very time. much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Bye-bye. Grazie. Bye bye. Thank you. Grazie. 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 Grazie